This podcast may contain forward-looking statements that are subject to risks and uncertainties. These forward-looking statements are based on current expectations and may differ materially from actual future events or results due to a variety of factors. For a discussion of factors that could affect our business, please refer to our filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. All of our statements are made as of today based on information currently available to us. We can give no assurance that these statements will prove to be correct, and we do not intend and undertake no duty to update these statements except as required by law. Welcome to the Inovix Journey to Scale podcast for Thursday, October 19th, 2023. I'm Kristen Atkins, Vice President of Marketing and Communications. On this podcast, we'll talk to Inovix leaders and management to gain insights and details on the company's progress to build and manufacture a breakthrough in lithium ion batteries to power the technologies of the future. In this episode, we're joined by Inovix Vice President of Research and Development, Jonathan Doan, who is literally the most down to earth scientist I've ever met. We'll discuss the company's technology and what makes Inovix unique. Hi, John. Thanks for making the time to talk. How are you? Good, thanks. This will be fun. Before we dive in to Inovix technology, we want to learn a little bit more about you. So you have a PhD in material science and engineering from Stanford and a degree in physics from MIT, and you started your career as an acting assistant professor at Stanford. That's impressive. So what drove you to make the shift from academia to R&D? My plan had never been really to be in academia at all. In in grad school, my advisor, uh, a a man by the name of John Brobman, uh, he's now president of Bucknell. But back then, he he was the chairman of the material science department at Stanford. Uh, He was my boss. Uh, There had been this position of acting assistant professor. Uh, So it's an assistant professor in every way, except you're not on the tenure track. Anyway, I was not planning on doing that. I was planning on going and working for some Silicon Valley startup. But this guy, he's he's uh, he can convince you to do things like he's, he's a hell of a talker. And uh, I went in for a meeting, didn't know what it was about. And I came out having agreed to, to sign on for three years to be a professor. And were you uh, teaching like... material science and engineering? Right. Yeah. So it was material science. It was uh, you know, either seniors or first year grad students like x-ray diffraction, microscopy, metallography, some metallurgy, kind of some old school stuff that, uh, but as a way of uh, facilitating lab skills. So we worked with micro- optical microscopes, electron microscopes, x-ray diffractometers, um, that sort of thing, like materials characterization was was a lot of what that was about, um, mm-hmm. but also the math and the science behind it. it was, they were They were fun, you know, fun to teach and fun to learn. Then you made the jump after, after the three years. Uh, tell us right. about that. I was looking uh, for something either in the MEMS space or I also looked a lot at like, microfluidics at that time, which was kind of up and coming. And, and uh, but I, I came across. Uh, what, sorry, what's MEMS and microfluidics? Oh, yeah. yeah. So MEMS, micro electromechanical systems. OK. And so this is like micro machining, typically using kind of IC processing techniques. Uh, when I first joined Inovix, uh, a lot of the techniques we used to make wafers into batteries were borrowed or, or at least analogous to, to what folks do with, with MEMS. Let's jump to Inovix. Tell us tell us about your role and what you're working on. Yeah, so I uh, I guess for the last six months, I've been the VP of R&D. And, and there's a lot of things that go into this. And, and, and maybe the first one, and I think this comes from Raj, our, our CEO, is uh, you know, like talking to customers and understanding what they want and what they need. But that's pretty important in that, you know, when you design a battery, it's pretty easy to make it do any one thing really well. The the hard bit is getting to do all the things that you care about in a particular application all at once. There's sort of typical metrics like energy density or cycle life or charge rate. Uh, and, and like I say, it's pretty easy to make any one of them good. The hard bit is getting the right mix for what the customer wants for their product. Uh, and, and the only way you really know that, and, and you know, it, it's easier for us to get a more visceral feel for that if, if you actually talk to the customers. So mm-hmm. that's one thing. And and then that leads to the next, which is just maintaining what the R&D roadmap looks like for, you know, the current year and for the next years. And then, you know, how do we evolve the key battery specs that we want to work on? After that, I guess, you know, it's it's running the group you know, a hiring aspect there. There's a culture building aspect there. Business specs for like, how do you run a, a, an R&D program? And so we, we have a, a business spec that says, 
what the over like you have to have a schedule you have to have milestones you have to have goals you have to know yeah i have to have a customer know what they want to what they want the battery to look like trying to make that formal so that people can follow along you can keep track well so you 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 joined Novix so uh a while ago that's right yeah i've been here about 10 years mm -hmm. and uh yeah it, i mean the place has changed a fair bit but uh this was true then and, and it's true now i think anytime I, i've switched jobs I, like you want to find a place where you have smart people working hard on some important problem mm -hmm. energy storage is a is a high level problem for the world right now uh, i think if you think of the big big issues in the world I, i'd say food water and energy mm -hmm. energy storage is a, is a big part of, of you know the energy problem and so you know we're working on at the moment we're working on high performance cell phone batteries but i think anything that moves the ball forward on energy storage is a good thing for the world and, and then like i say we have a lot of smart people and you want to be a place where people are excited and working hard on, on stuff and so uh, like I say, that's, that's what put, got me in the door. And then that's the, you know, the culture we have and we're the one we're trying to keep. Absolutely. Wonderful. What can you tell us about Anovix batteries compared to graphite batteries? So I guess the story starts there with energy density to first approximation, how much energy density you have in a battery is how much cathode you can cram in the, the space you, you save in your device for the battery. And we do that by making the anode smaller. And, and we do that by using silicon instead of graphite as our, as our anode material. You know, our, our anodes are maybe not quite half as thick as, as what, you know, you could, you could have for a graphite anode. And, and we have ways of making them thinner still for the same cathode capacity. The Inovix architecture lets us use that. And, and you know, that's a, a pretty big deal. The batteries that we have right now, they're, you know, lithium cobalt oxide, typically on the on the cathode side, uh, for at least for a high performing, you know, consumer electronics, uh, and then graphite on the anode side. And, and people have played a lot of amazing tricks to make LCO better and better over the years. But it seems like that's you know, getting harder and harder, and then maybe the end is in sight for making LCO better. We're long past the place where where the electrolytes are nice and stable up against the LCO, and where the system can hold together with uh, the composition changes we do when we take lithium out of the cathode uh, to charge the battery. Mm -hmm. um, and graphite hasn't gotten that much better either, and so we really need some new thing to come in and 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 shake up the industry and, and we think that's silicon on the anode side and so that like that puts us on the leading edge of, of high performance batteries and that's kind of a fun place to be when you talk about the the anode we do say that we're using 100 percent active silicon but we also say Inovix is material agnostic can you talk a little bit about what that really means to be material agnostic yeah there's a lot of big companies with lots of smart engineers working hard to make better cathode materials to make better anode materials uh, and and for us, that's fantastic, right? Where we we want to buy, you know, black powder from people who make anode materials and whoever makes the best one, then that's the one we want to buy. The architecture that we have, the constraint system, you know, that, that's built into our batteries lets us cycle silicon well, and we don't have to limit how much we put in the device. And so, you know, there's companies, many, you know, Sila is one that's just up the road, but there, there are many others working on sort of engineered silicon. And that's fantastic for us. Like if, if they make a better silicon, we're happy to use it from them or, or from whoever will sell, you know, sell us whatever they got. And ditto on the cathode side. Someone comes up with a better cathode material. That's not a disadvantage for us. It's we just buy that too. We put in our battery and our battery gets better because of that. So it really lets us ride the wave of this materials uh, arms race by all these big companies around the world making, making better you know, cathode and anode materials. Seems like a good place to be where Inovix can benefit from all the innovation happening in materials. That was one of, like when I joined, that was one of my questions a long time ago. Was, okay, so we're an anode material. You're not worrying at all about the cathode. Like what happens when someone makes a better cathode? And, and the answer was, oh yeah, we just buy it and use it. I'm like, okay, yeah, that, I, I like that answer. That makes sense, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. and, so, and that's still what we do now. So when, when you meet someone new and they don't know anything about Inovix, how do you describe how Inovix is different? The main thing is, you know, we talk about how we stack our batteries sort of sideways, where if you look at your your cell phone, you know, the, the battery is probably almost the same size as your cell phone. Uh, and you can think of making that by stacking up index cards of sheets of electrodes, you know, on top of a table until it's a few millimeters thick. Instead, we cut little strips and we stack the other way. To make silicon cycle well, you need about 10 megapascals of, of pressure normal to your stacking direction. And if you put that on the big area face of it, then you're talking about tons of force you need to hold everything together. It's a really kind of simple trick, but if you use that same pressure on a smaller area, you need a smaller force. And so we can have a lower overhead 
constraint system to hold everything together uh, and and make the battery cycle very similar to to what you what you have in your pocket right now. It's just we stack in this alternate direction and and put this low overhead constraint on top. In our lab, you can go back and find huge metal plates that we can put on top of batteries that we stack the other way, and and we can cycle silicon that way. And and I've taken tours of other companies, and I've been in their labs, and you see these you know huge metal plates in the corner. We're like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, I know what you do. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, it, it's just that doesn't fit in your cell phone so well. Again, it's the mechanical ingenuity of you know the folks who designed this here to get this sideways stacking to work uh i mean that's really the the part that enables everything else one fun thing about being here is that you know there's chemistry problems uh electrochemistry problems design optimization problems but it's also a mechanical system like if you're a mechanical engineer this is a pretty fun place to be both in terms of equipment design but but also in terms of understanding how the battery works like silicon in your battery means that you need to know a little bit of mechanical engineering Mm -hmm. Uh, plus you got that, plus you have data stuff on top of it. Historically, the battery industry has about a 4% year on year improvement rate. And we're looking to be a substantial bit better than that. And we think we could do it both by focusing inside the battery on the chemistry and the materials and, and, you know, the current collectors, but also in the packaging area, we have ideas on how to reduce the overhead that the package takes. uh, And that'll also give us substantial benefits. So we we can innovate on both kind of inside and outside, uh, and and that'll give us an advantage in the coming, in the coming years. It's great to hear about our commitment to innovation. Okay. Thank you so much, John. This has been really interesting. Loved learning more about what you do and what your team is working on. So thanks for joining us on our podcast. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's just fun. That concludes this episode of our Journey to Scale podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe for alerts. We'll be releasing new episodes as we reach new milestones and scale up to high volume manufacturing. Until then, thank you and have a great day.